Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Go, 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 go. Happy Death Day follows a vapid, self-absorbed college student named Tree. Yes, her name is really Tree, through one horror show of a birthday, in which she treats people like garbage, engages in unsafe and immoral activity, and caps it all off by getting murdered by a masked killer in the evening. Now, now, now that's not a spoiler, that's the premise. Why? Because just like in the movie Groundhog Day, this party girl is stuck in a time loop where each time she is murdered, she wakes up in the same spot on the same morning to give the day another try. Along the way, she tries to solve her own murder, deal with her personal demons, notice her self-destructive patterns, and hey, maybe even fall in love with a sweet young guy as well. Each go-round ends with her getting stalked and murdered until presumably she gets it right and literally lives to fight another day. I gotta say, this movie surprised me because this is being marketed as another low-budget slasher movie from Blumhouse Productions, and being released as it is on Friday the 13th, it's obviously going after a familiar demographic. But one of the first things you realize as you go through the film is that it isn't a basic slasher movie. It can't be. Why? Because normally in a slasher movie, you have a bunch of dumb or vapid characters getting murdered in nasty ways, and there is suspense in rooting for your favorites to escape. In Happy Death Day, with only a couple of minor exceptions, the only one who gets killed is our heroine, and she gets killed over and over, whereupon she immediately is resurrected. So where's the suspense? Does it even matter if she gets killed? Then why would I be tense while I'm watching her get chased by this relentless killer? I don't care if she dies, and as the movie goes along, she doesn't really care if she dies either. The funny thing is, the movie seems to know instinctively when you stop caring if she dies. The first couple of times the tree is chased, the moment is built up for suspense, as it would be in any slasher movie jump scare scene. But after that, you can sort of feel the filmmakers taking their foot off the gas when it comes to the normal genre conventions. I mean, this movie is rated PG-13, and any violence is minimal at best. And they shift focus to highlight what the movie really is, and, and I'll let you in on the secret. Shh. Happy Death Day is not a horror movie. That's right, despite the fact that it's being released in October on Friday the 13th, Happy Death Day is truly a black comedy. It's paper thin, it's got occasional problems with tone, and the plot really doesn't hold up to scrutiny. For example, this killer seems to have a supernatural ability to anticipate what Tree will do that borders on the city. And there's a montage of detective work slash murder that jumps that border entirely. Happy Death Day steers into the curve, doesn't take itself seriously, and as a result, it's a lot more fun than it has any right to be. It may lure you to the theater under slightly false pretenses, but you'll walk out entertained regardless. And the main reason for that is this girl, Jessica Roth. Now, I've never heard of her, although she had a small part as one of Emma Stone's friends in La La Land. Now, now this girl, this girl is a star. Not only does she carry the whole movie, she won me over with her charm and had me rooting for her by the end. Now she's got a lot to play here, from her journey from being cruel to compassionate, to figuring out the mystery of who keeps trying to kill her, to capitalizing on some of the benefits of the hard reset every time she dies. Jessica Roth navigates the comedic beats, the vulnerability, the romance, and one really emotional scene where she bares her soul to a pretty unlikely person, which all adds up to a fun, scrappy little heroine that you really can relate to and root for. As a result, I award Happy Death Day, surprisingly enough, a medium bag of popcorn. This is a nice little date movie, provided you don't go in with very high expectations. The logic of the story doesn't always track, some interesting thematic threads are teased out but not really followed through, and there are perhaps one too many twists near the end, and one too many endings as well. Like I said, the material is paper thin. But Happy Death Day proves that sometimes all you need is a decent premise and a plucky and appealing actress who's capable of tearing into material to get a fun and diverting night out of the movies. You can ask for more, but really, what you get is pretty darn good. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Happy Death Day in the comments as well. Let me hear it. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Go, Colonel. It's the birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' sip a card like it's your birthday.